Okay, in this presentation we're going to look at generating random numbers. So in this particular case what we're looking at is we're going to use the uniform distribution and we're going to use two realizations from the uniform distribution and what we're going to do with those is generate two observations from the Weibull distribution with parameters c equals 0 0.002 and k equal to 1.1. So let's actually just check what that means first off. So essentially what we're going to do is here do a little bit of theory and revision of the Weibull distribution. Now here in the first instance, this part here is where we would talk about the probability density function. Okay, now we don't really use that when we're do, dealing with uh, random number generation, but it's just probably the first port of call. You might notice there that we have, uh, what we're dealing with is uh, some value x and parameters lambda and k. And that's the prob probability density function there accordingly. k is the shape parameter and lambda is the scale parameter. Now you might notice here that we don't, ha we have a k but we don't have a lambda. Okay, so what would be more practical for the purposes of distributions are random number generation actually would be the distribution function now this is 1 minus e to the minus x over lambda to the power of k for x greater than or equal to 0 okay that's capital F which is the cumulative distribution function also known as the CDF now we still don't have any sign of a C but uh, what we're going to do here is actually I think you can sort of guess it there that with a lot of these distributions, like the Pareto distribution and the Weibull distribution, uh, that there's multiple ways of specifying it. And partly because in finance, in medicine, in engineering, partly because each way would be more suitable in different branches of science. So in this particular instance, this might be the most useful uh, approach for financial mathematics and financial statistics and so on. So that's the one we'd sort of go to here. So we're just going to reset it up as we're going to denote uh, the inverse of lambda as c, which we have, 0 0.002, and then just re-express this e expression here as follows, 1 minus e to the minus cx to the power of k, okay? I'll just, uh, just emphasize that there, the exponential of minus cx, whoops, power of k 1 minus that okay so that is our cdf our cumulative distribution function now anyway this is what we will use to generate random numbers so particularly for continuous distributions essentially this is the key thing you would work from the cdf and just basically work backwards so we're going to start off i mean in this case in a, in this case x is greater than or equal to 0 for uh, you know, we'll just get to work on that assumption there. So we'll just use the top case. And what we're going to do is um, we have u in both cases. And what we're going to do is that's the two numbers that we were drawn from the normal distribution. Sorry, the uniform distribution, those two there. Okay. So what we're going to do is let that equal to our CDF. But what we're going to do is just re restate this expression here, this entire expression here as a function in terms of x. So essentially what we just do is rearrange the whole thing. So we uh, go 1 minus u is equal to e, uh, minus e to the minus cx to the power of k. Okay. And get the logarithm of that, log of both sides. So that's what we end up with here. Okay. And then we get divide by both sides by minus c and then get the kth root of that k to the power of minus one okay so if k yeah so it says k to the minus one so just actually be clear in case that's a little bit hard to read that is k to the minus one there which is the superscript okay so essentially that's what we do so essentially what we have to do here in both cases is for some value u in and also noting that k is equal to 1.1 and c is equal to 0 0.02 essentially just evaluate it okay now uh, just as a remark when you're doing this out by pen and pay pa pen and paper or by calculators or even doing it using a computer just checking your numbers in a computer a little bit of rounding error will kick in so just 
be careful of that. It'll happen. In fact, it might even happen here. If you're trying to work through what I'm doing here, it might not be entirely consistent here. Essentially, I just shaved off a few dec uh, decimal places here and there just to make it a little bit more readable. So our first number here is 0 0.238. Okay. Uh, before I continue, correctly, well, not correctly, but if you have an uh, if you have an expression called you, uh, where you have one minus u, you can replace it just with u. Okay. So in practice, what you could do there is actually when you have an expression there one minus u, you can't, which is a, you can replace that with u because they're both uniform uh, random numbers. Okay. So it it's without you're not losing any mathematical functionality or it's still valid just to replace one with the other because one minus u is also uniformly distributed okay so they're just one minus the complement of each other but we'll just continue precisely as we stated the question so log of one minus 0 0.238 divided by minus 0 0.002 to the power of 1.1 to the power of minus one in other words power of 1 over 1 minus 1 okay this is a little bit of calculator work and what you should get is a number that is close to 86.95 okay so you should be in the region of 87 okay around ra allowing for some decimal places okay you should be around that value there okay so the way I have it stated there is 86.95417 Okay, but you know, if you if you're close to that, that's fine. Uh, we do the same thing for the other number here. Okay, sorry, that should be zero point six five five. Okay, w same procedure. Log of one minus zero point six five five. That is log of zero point three four five. Divide that by minus zero point zero zero two. Okay, and all of that to the power of 0 0.909, which is 1 over 1.1, okay? Again, a little bit of calculator work. And again, don't worry too much if you're a little bit out with decimal places. Something in this region of 300, 300 301, that is uh, the right answer there, okay? I think this in this instance, it's very close to 73, so or 0.73, so I'll just leave it as that, okay? So, uh, key things there are really just knowing the, essentially, the cumulative distribution function. Okay, let's actually just use this one here. The cumulative distribution function is the key part of this. Okay, that is uh, using that essentially and just being able to reparameterize it or restate it in a form that you're comfortable with and so on. So, for example, the hazard here was denoting a lambda as the inverse of lambda as c. Okay, it was intentionally left a little bit vague. Uh, just actually something to keep a track of is that sometimes these numbers here, like in different textbooks, they might come in as k is sometimes denoted as gamma. Okay, in some other books. Okay, like on Wikipedia, it's called gamma. Okay, and also just remember, yeah, which formulation of the Weibull distribution you should be using. Okay, so just check your statistical tables and your formula sheet. Okay, I think that's it. We'll leave it there.